In this video I want to give you a quick intro introduction to the normal distribution. We're going to look at tossing two coins, four coins, a hundred coins and we'll look at some real life examples of the normal distribution and things that aren't normally distributed. So um, first up we're going to toss two coins. What I want you to do is press pause and write down all the possibilities that you could get when you toss two coins. For example, one possibility is you could get a head and a head. What are the others? Okay, so I hope you pressed pause and tried it. So the other possibilities you could get a head then a tail, you could get a tail then a head, you could get a tail and a tail, right? So um, th here, so so if I was what I'm trying to do to get you to do is if you were to look at the number of heads and you were to graph, okay, let's look at getting zero heads, getting one head and getting two heads and what we, what we want to do is plot the probability of each okay so you know what is the probability of getting zero heads one head or two heads press pause and see if you can quickly figure that one out and then see if you can we're going to make a bar graph so see if you can press pause and calculate the probability of getting zero heads one head then two heads okay so here we've got two heads right here we've got one head in both of these examples there's two ways to get one head you get a head and a tail or you get a head and a tail or once again a tail and then a head so there's two ways of getting one head and there's zero ways I'd say there's, there's one way of getting uh, no heads okay so the probability of getting two heads, you've got to get head, head, and there's one, two, three, four possibilities altogether. So the probability of getting two heads is what? What's the probability of, of each outcome? Okay, so the probability of each outcome should be to get uh, two heads, that's a quarter, or 25%. To get uh, one head, that's two possibilities out of four, which is 50%, a half, right? 50%. Probability getting zero heads is one quarter, 25%. And if we were to plot that really quickly, we'll just put 25% um, uh, here, and then it doesn't have to be exact. We just want to get an idea, put 50% here. If we were to plot this, I would just do kind of a, a bar graph, which is just like a histogram, but to getting uh, zero heads, that's 25% probability. It looks like that. To get one head, that's a 50% probability and to get uh, two, uh, two heads that is once again 25% probability okay so our bar graph it kinda looks like that it's almost like this you know tri uh, pyramid triangular structure now uh, the next up we're gonna toss four coins and I'm gonna um, do all this for you so please don't do it. and I just um, so what, all I'm trying to, I want you to understand what's going on though. If I was to toss four coins, you see, uh, one of the outcomes is I could get all he heads. I could get four heads. But that's kind of unlikely, isn't it? And if I was to list all of the possibilities, these are all the ways of getting three heads. Head, 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 tail. Head, head, tail, head. Head, tail, head, head. Tail, head, head, head. Okay, so there are four ways to get three heads and there's going to be 16 possibilities altogether. So the probability of getting three heads is going to be 25%. The probability of getting four heads, by the way, is 6.25%. It's going to be one possibility out of a total of 16. Okay, so you don't need to write this down. I just want to show you it so you get the idea of what a normal graph looks like and where it comes from. Probability of getting two heads, and this is the most interesting thing. If you were to toss four coins, wouldn't you expect to get two heads about on average and look I just got two heads there head tail head tail I got this one um, ba, 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 ba. I got uh, head tail head tail right so you have six chances out of 16 to get two heads and again the probability is 37 and a half percent 37.5 percent for that to get one head the probability is 25 percent and to get no heads the probability is 6.25 percent so if we were to quickly um, draw that graph this would be number of heads. This is probability here, okay? And we've got 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, and the graph would look like this. And the only point I'm trying to make is, and I hope you understand this, that if you're to toss four heads, four coins, 
you would expect to get two heads but you might just you might kind of it's kind of likely you might only get one head or you might get three heads but you would think wouldn't you that it's quite unlikely that you're going to get four heads that's kind of unlikely head 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 and it's kind of unlikely you're going to get zero heads because the only way to get zero heads is to get all tails and that's kind of unlikely too and you'd be right and the structure looks like this and it kind of looks like a pyramid but we're going to find and I hope you watch the video that comes after this one it's just really short and it shows you a real life example of this this structure being formed it's it's not going to look like it uh, like a, a, a uh, kind of a triangle it's actually going to look like the shape of a bell and so if you, if you watch that video it should be kind of cool so my point is if you were to toss 100 coins the most likely thing that would happen is you would get 50 okay if you were to take a hundred coins and toss them you're most likely get going to get fifty heads but but um, you would think hey I might get exactly fifty might get fifty one or fifty two or fifty three fifty four fifty five and I might easily get forty six forty uh, sorry forty nine forty eight forty seven forty six or forty five so in fact and we'll see this later at sixty eight percent of the time, if you tossed, uh, if you toss a hundred coins, sixty-eight percent of the time you're going to get between forty-five and fifty-five heads. Ninety-five percent of the time you're going to get between forty and sixty heads, and ninety-nine point seven percent of the time you're going to get between thirty-five and sixty-five heads. And the point about this is that the average, the mean or the average is going to be fifty, but. Um, you're just as likely to get more than 50 as you are to get less than 50 and when you if 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 you were to to put to stack the probabilities up it would make this interesting bell curve shape because if you think about it, there is a possibility of getting 100 heads it's just really small there's a possibility of getting 65 heads and 70 heads it's just really really small and so this kind of bell shape goes off like that forever and the possibility of getting zero heads is really small too i mean can you imagine tossing a hundred coins and them all turning up tails, right? I mean, that's a tiny possibility. Probability. And again, if you imagine tossing a hundred coins and getting a hundred heads, sounds like a really far out probability, and it is. It's way out there. Okay, so um, that's that. And then if we were to think about um, uh, manufacturing. Um, and I've just done this earlier because I just want to uh, make the video short. But it, it, there are tons of example of real life examples of a normal distribution. For example, in manufacturing, um, and uh, sheesh, and you know what? I'm just going to stop that because. Bop, bop, bop. So in the in real life, real life examples, okay, not just tossing coins. Real life examples of the normal distribution pop up all the time, and they're just like tossing a coin. If you take uh, manufacturing, the margin of error in the size of machine part might well be normally distributed. What that means is a part might need to be 50 inches. But nothing's perfect and some of them might end up being 50.01 inches long and some of them might end up being 49.99 inches long and some of them might in fact be 50.02 inches long and a very few might end up being out here 49.98 inches long and they be in so most of your parts are going to be say between 49.98 and 50.02 inches long and I, I mean I don't know what what part this could be it could be any part or so but the point is most of the parts are going to be about 50 inches long. If you were to produce uh, 100,000 parts in a factory, then some of them are a little bit more than 50 inches. Okay, and in fact, some of them are off by 0 0.01 of an inch, and then a tiny amount are even more than that. And similarly, some of them are 
um, a little bit too small even as far as 49.99 inches and a very few are way out at 49.98 inches long and so when you manufacture parts you get once again this bell shaped structure so it's just like tossing a coin it's random um, the chances are the part is going to be what it should be 50 inches that's the mean but it's just as likely that it'll there'll be a bit of error. it's likely there'll be a little there's going to be a little bit of error of course and it's just as likely that the part will be a little bit too long as it is that the part will be a little bit too short and in fact if it's between these two lengths it's going to work in the machine anyway so we don't mind as long as it falls within here and the parts that come out over here and here these ones have to be rejected if it's more than 50.02 or less than 49.98 the part has to be rejected and um, and and put in the scrap pile so this is an example of using a normal distribution in manufacturing and I mean you can think of anything the size of potatoes in a field most of them are half a pound let's say and um, some of them are go as far as three quarters of a pound and some of them go as far as a quarter of a pound so if you're looking at um, the, the distribution of weights of uh, potatoes in a field that might be a normal distribution uh, where they're around a half a pound by about a quarter and um, similarly the size of hay bales in a field might be normally distributed if the length of trout in a river uh, you know they they might be um, who knows one foot long and some of them are a little bit more and some are a little bit less um, the weight of steers in the corral uh, young male cows so they might be about a thousand pounds some of them might be 1200 pounds some of them might be in fact 800 pounds but they're around a thousand and so weights of steers in a corral for a particular year might be normally distributed and so on and so it leads to the question well is everything normally distributed? No, it's not. A lot of things are though, but not everything. If you were to take income levels, let's say the mean income level in the country is $60,000. Does it sound natural to you that, okay, if you take somebody random from the population of the country, their income is, you know, it's probably 60000 and then you think that, you know, half the people kind of earn a little bit more than that and half the people earn uh, you're just as likely to earn less than 60,000 as you are to earn more do you think that income is distributed normally like that where you've got just as many rich people as poor people let's say so there's just as many people earning a hundred thousand as there are earning around twenty thousand is that a fact in the world are there just as many people earning 20,000 as, as 100,000 or, 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 or is income distributed normally? I'm not going to go into whether it should be or not, just <laughs> the question is it? So this is a famous, you know, and this is for, for pretty much every single country in the world. When we're just talking about the US because that's where we live. But for every single country in the world, income is not distributed normally. We know that. There's more poor people, let's say, than rich people. Obviously, of course, there has to be more rich people than poor. So, like, you know, the mean, the average might be 60,000, um, but, you know, you could have, say, 60% of people earning less than that and only 40% earning more. So the mean might fall here, but this doesn't look like a nice bell. It's not a nice bell. It has, you know, kind of, uh, there's lots more poor people than rich people. There are a few rich people down here, they earn a whole bunch. And and that that goes on forever, you know, up up to up to the super rich that are in kind of like you know twenty five million a year and all this type of stuff, and then you've got you know the people at this end of the scale. So um, the median, in fact, the median is about fifty thousand, and the median splits uh, the the number of people. So about half the people, fifty percent, earn less than fifty thousand. Fifty percent earn more than fifty thousand. But the average, the mean, is at sixty. So, so that's that's a kind of inter interesting thing. Um, so, if you were to to calculate the average income, it would be about sixty thousand. However, it doesn't like like it, it's not distributed like that. We don't have half earning less than sixty, half earning more. We have most people earning less than the the average, and mo and 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 less people earning more than the average or the mean. Okay. So, in any case, 
And here's a, a funny um, graph from the Occupy movement that shows that 40% how poor 40% of people uh, the, of the poorest are in the country and you know once again this is the same for you know pretty much every country in the world but it, it, it is kind of funny I think so if US land were divided like US wealth 1% would own you know she's <laughs> almost half the country and 40% the poorest 40% would own this tiny little red dot here so I uh, just thought it was kind of funny I thought I would include that and uh, just to know, like, you know, I, I'd be in the 40%, but sheesh, I never thought it was that poor. It's amazing the disparity, really. I just think that's a funny graph. And I think it might, in fact, be true. So, but don't quote me on that. But I just thought I'd include it just for fun. And, um, yes, so, so you, you can you can see this. You can look up into U.S., or, or you can look into income distribution. It's a lot of fun. So another graph that is not normally distributed might be a class test score. And if you take the scores you know here's 100% here's 0% and you might have two distinct groups of students you might have the students that do their homework and they score around 80% some of them score a little bit more some of them score a little bit less but on average they score about 80% then you have the so these guys do the homework and then there's a group that don't do the homework and the group that don't do the homework there's not as many of those but these guys score around let's say 30 percent on the test some of them score a bit more some of them score a bit less and so f if you were to take uh, test scores in a class sometimes you can get this funny graph that has two peaks and this one's called bimodal it has two modes or or two, two common scores like kind of 30 percent 80 percent has two means basically and this obviously is not a normal it's kind of like two normals put together so it's not just a normal distribution like all these other ones we've been looking at so not everything is normally distributed but a lot of things are